So our panel today, if you would uh, uh, indulge me here, we've got Ron Record. I love Ron's name. It sounds like a DJ, right? Ron Record, top 100. Uh, Ron Heidi Young from Rewards Now. Shazia, which you've just heard from the members group. And Stephen, you say Stephen, correct? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I pronunciate that right. Uh, Bohannon. And Brian Bodell uh, is also with us today. So we're going to go ahead, and this is your opportunity to ask them some questions, uh, really to get some insight on some of the experiences that you have with your members. I also just want to make a quick note, and that is please make sure you're taking notes. I know uh, from past experiences, I'll go to these conferences and I'll come up with some great ideas, some wonderful thoughts. And then when I get home, my wife will ask me, how was it? And I'll say, it was great. Well, what was it about? And I'll go, well, uh, there were some really good insights. Well, what was it about? And, and you know, and if I can't remember it a week later, how am I gonna remember it a month later, okay? I was also speaking to some of our credit unions. They mentioned that when they go to these events, they actually have to go back and report to their board. So that would be a good opportunity to take notes, right? Uh, although he did mention that some of the board members kind of rehashed the whole conference again, so that's maybe not good. But you wanna give some uh, good points there. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, and we do want you to use the mics because this is being recorded, and so we wanna hear your questions. And so if you have a question, let's go ahead and raise our hand, and uh, let's go ahead and start. Um, you also, by chance, I should mention this, in your booklets, on page 28, there are some questions. So if we need to get started, we want to make sure you've got these questions answered for yourself. Okay? I am going to have you kind of go through again, because there are some people in the room. Can we have you introduce yourselves again, who you're with, and tell us a little bit about yourself? Nothing too personal, Ron, okay? Nothing, nothing too personal. I'm not sure I'm on here. Ron Record, uh, Salem Technologies. We partner with Co-op on Total Revelation. For those of you who weren't in my meeting before, it's the uh, analytics tool that's in place. You, you may have to bring it to you. Yeah, just bring it right up to you. Remember, you're on the radio, uh, Ron Record. Uh, that's a lot of pressure with the last name, but I'll get through it. <laughs> Uh, as a reminder, um, Ron Record from Salem Technology, partner with Co-op on Total Revelation. It's an analytics tool that is available if your cards or ATMs are processed through Co-op today. Uh, I've been in the industry since 1997, working for Nice, Fiserv, and Salem Technologies. Good. And I'm Heidi Young. I'm with Rewards Now. We are a partner of Co-ops, and we offer loyalty programs to credit unions um, all across the country. Any kind of combination of programs, whether it's credit card or debit, um, even relationship rewards. Um, and we also have merchant funded programs. So national programs, uh, local merchant programs, any kind of combination. Shazi Amanis, I'm the CEO of the members group. Uh, we offer end-to-end -end payment solution, credit card, debit processing, ATM, P2P, so on and so forth. I'm Stephen Bohannon. I'm the uh, Chief Strategy and Sales Officer for Alchemy Technology. Uh, Alchemy is a next generation online and mobile banking solution. Uh, really, it's a full uh, digital banking platform uh, that you can use to not only offer, you know, replace your current systems, but also integrated with uh, content management, marketing, and so forth. We'll talk more about it. Well, my name is Brian Bodell. I'm with Innovation. We're a software firm based in New York. We uh, build mobile and web applications, credit card, debit card, lending systems do a lot of systems integration. I think um, another way that uh, friends have described our company is essentially geeks for hire. And uh, we do a lot of work with uh, co-op on application uh, development. Okay, well, thank you. All right, do we have any questions before I knock down the speaker? Do we have any questions for this panel? I'm going to go ahead. Go ahead. Well, maybe for Heidi... Uh, I get so tired of hearing Chase's advertisements, you know, and I'm just wondering, uh, does Rewards Now, do you guys have like a think tank that's going to have something that we might be ahead of Chase on in the future? <laughs> well, that's a great question, and competing with some of those national issuers, that's a, a hard task to do, right? And I think for us, what we help our clients do 
is find a new and different way, something that's a little closer to home for your members. Maybe it's adding points for some of their credit union products, something they're not getting from Chase or Wells or any of the others. It also includes maybe including redemptions that are your products, your services, or maybe local merchants in your area. So it's about bringing it a little bit closer to home, where Chase has the big national program, and they advertise you know, their cash back and all their promotions. And for you, you can leverage that, but you also can bring it a little bit closer in, whether that's local charities included as a redemption, maybe it's your local merchant-funded program, where if they go to the local pizza place for dinner, now they can earn 10 points extra per dollar, something like that. So it's a, I think for us, it's about bringing it closer to home for the members. And I was mentioned earlier about ACH. You know, people, Target, for example, was given 5% back. Yeah. Can you address that a little bit, how the rewards kind of help that situation out when we're trying to promote actually utilizing our cards? Sure. So, you know, from the member's perspective, this is all they hear about, right? If they're watching the baseball game tonight, they see advertisements for some of those national issuers. So. Um, being able to attach rewards and some incentive, whether it's cash back, whether it's gift cards or travel, giving them options so that you have the, the broadest appeal for the members. Um, but it does really shape those behaviors. Do you want them to use those <coughs> cards more? Are you looking for, um, if you have some, uh, some big goals next month for some new loan acquisitions, you know, giving them bonus points when they open that loan, they get a great rate, but then they also get 5,000 points. It's about shaping that behavior and giving them that extra incentive. It can be something as simple as uh, sign up for your e-statement that we all want them to do because it saves us some money. We can incent them to do that by, by giving them some bonus points into their account. So I'm not sure who can answer this, probably Stephen and Brian, but um, I've been reading a lot about the member experience and the buyer experience and how um, because of there's so many game apps out there and the younger generation, and not just the younger generation, all ages are kind of playing all of these games. And um, when I was trying to look at onboarding and, and, and trying to get more retention and various other things with our members, um, I was trying to come up with something that would kind of give um, almost like a, a progress bar as far as how they were, how invested they were in the credit union as far as, but for them to see. So does Alchemy have any plans to kind of help build a credit union product whereby I can measure and they can see kind of their full, um, like how invested they are. Okay, so they opened a checking account, but they haven't paid any bill pay yet. So in, in you kind of give them levels and rewards and that type of thing. So that's where I'm thinking, and I'd love for you to build that for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're thinking about that. Uh, so uh, it's funny that you mentioned that. Uh, the name of our platform is called the Orb Platform. It actually stands for Online Relationship Builder. Uh, we don't really say that much anymore. But uh, so a couple things. It's, it's funny it's kind of timely that you asked about that. We actually have just recently kicked off some uh, reports into our system that we're actually running to kind of test the algorithms that actually l look and and give points, think of it like a credit score for the relationship they have. And it looks at like how often they log in, how many accounts they have, average daily balance in their accounts. Are they using the budgeting tools? Are they using the savings tools? Are they clicking on the promotions? Are they clicking on the educational content? And basically we, we track so many metrics of the user as they log in. Are they logging in from mobile devices and from desktop devices and all these things that are ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with a mathematical calculation to uh, equate to stickiness for that particular member. Um, the current plan is right now for you to have access to that. So you can see that and then actually be able to use that score to drive content. So for people that have higher scores, maybe it's a certain other sort of content you want to promote uh, to them. People have lower scores within that. Maybe I want to do something to encourage more of that behavior to get in there. Um, so it's very interesting that you bring that up. On the, on the flip side of that, for the user experience themselves, we've toyed with some of those ideas in the past. Really where we're trending right now is really more to a badge system so that people earn badges for doing certain things. So it could be how long they've been with you, how many accounts they have with you, keeping a, 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 a balance in their account of maybe $5,000 for more than six months or something like that where they earn badges within the system. So that's the gamification that you're talking about. 
Um, it, it's, and it's funny enough is that we all tend to think of it, I have two teenage daughters, and we, we all tend to think of it as just for the next generation, but what we've seen within our system is that loading profile images, setting up nicknames, setting up alerts, all this, we have people as high as 90 years old that are actually like uploading profile images, putting nicknames in there, setting up savings goals. It's really interesting. So, you know, <clears throat> really the fastest growing uh, segment of users on Facebook is even the over 50 crowd, <laughs> right? So. Um, interestingly enough, um, I don't have anything I could give you today, but it's very interesting that you mentioned that. And we've got a guy right over here in the room that would love to get your card and follow up with you afterwards. <laughs> I actually have another question on that because we do hear this a lot from credit unions um, when we're going to talk to them from time to time. That is, we have all these new applications, all these new products and services, and what we don't have is a seamless or organization of all these products and services. So we'd like to see it all in one area uh, function perfectly, of course. Um, and I know you're with the home banking platform, and that's a big part of what the members' experience is all about. Can you talk a little bit about that, uh, what you're doing as far as to make that member experience attractive for our members, and uh, what is working and maybe what is not working? Yeah, well, you're going to get me on my uh, my soapbox here I'm for a second. <laughs> um, so, and this is this ties in a lot with what Brian Finnovation does as well, not only with their integration and, the, and all the CUFX, uh, CUFX initiatives that they're working with as well, but what, what we have in online banking today, um, it's 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 kind of sad. So let me let me give you the um, the equivalent. So, do you know how many merchants sell through Amazon? Tens of thousands of merchants sell through Amazon, right? You just go there and buy the product, and and it just takes care of it, right? Um, think about iTunes. Think about how many app developers, how many uh, recording labels, how many movie studios, how many book publishers all sell through that, right? Well, the equivalent of what we have in online banking is if every time you wanted to buy something from Amazon, we, you, we, we launched you into this other window, and then you went through this a whole separate checkout process depending on who the merchant was, and it would have a kind of a different uh, experience or depending on which movie I wanted to buy or which book I wanted to read, I would click and then, oh, I've got a new you know, single sign-on to this other thing, and I have to learn this new experience right all over again. What those companies have done is a good job is, you know, and, and by the way, I would call that model, which is what most online banking systems are today, the old portal model, which is as long as we give you a trailhead from which you can click all these links to go into all these other experiences, then we've done our job. And all you've really done is pushed the pain that your MSRs had before in doing all these different things out to your member. So what we're really focused upon is an integration at the platform layer so that all of those um, um, interfaces into those third-party systems are pulled into a single platform and then the experience can be uniform throughout. So that no matter if a person happens to log in to transfer money or if they do their bill pay, it's the same system, or if they want to go to PFM, it's the same system, or if they want to look at their e-statements, it's the same system, if they want to change their address, it's the same system. It's not all these forms and everything. If they want to apply for a loan, it's the same system. Oh, I can see my credit card balances, but if I, but if I want to see my transaction, you just have to click this other thing and single sign on over to the TMG to see that, right? So, and in fact, we've got a joint customer now that we're, you know, we've, it's, it's cool, because on the back end, you have no idea, but we're actually going out to TMG and to the core and everything, pulling it all together, and the user thinks it's one thing. So I would say that where, where the trend needs to be is really to this a unified experience. If you want your users to adopt it and to use it more often and to have kind of more pleasure as they're using it, so it's supposed to be a pleasurable experience as they're using this, you got to have a single thing. And then the, the side benefit that you get from that <coughs> is that whenever you write integration of the platform layer, you now get to sync in all that data from all those third-party systems, and now you can leverage it to actually effectively cross-sell to those members and really know what the whole relationship looks like. Before, as soon as you pop out to some other system or frame something in there, you lose total insight into what that member is doing. All you know is you sent them there, but that's all you know. So anyway, I could talk on that for about, well, the rest of this time, so I'll stop. <laughs> Brian, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think that's very well said. I mean, uh, it is a disjointed experience today, and uh, it, it's going to get better with the unified platforms and where more people are opening up their APIs to pull the data in multiple places. So you, you definitely need a platform on the UI level and the application level that something um, that Alchemy provides. And then, you know, as Stephen referenced, um, the, the data, analyzing the data. And that's, you know, where Salen can really help with really understanding where all these people coming from, what are they doing. Um, so I, I think it's just important uh, also before you even get into the technology is really just understand what your members are going through. At the CUNA Technology Council CIO Roundtable last week, 
big discussion of how many credit unions are actually going out there and trying to understand the full member experience across channels. And a lot of people haven't actually gone in, and we're talking very large credit unions, have not gone in to analyze what they experience across channels and what it'll then, and then comparing that to other user experiences because the competition is not other banks or other credit unions. We're dealing with people that have seamless experience in other industries. So first step before you even get into the tech is just understand, you know, what does your member experience and, you know, what data do you have? And then you have to develop the action plan, including the technology to make it more of a seamless experience. I also think um, there's a value as you are selecting partners to um, get a feel for how open architecture the provider's solution is. Now, here's the catch. Everybody will say they're open, right? And as you try to go integration, then you find out the reality. But I think that's where, as part of the due diligence process, um, the more architecture, more open that is, then you can build, you can get API, and you can build GUI interface. You can create that experience that is needed. That's one of the things, at least from TMG's perspective, for the last 20 years, we, we have been able to leverage that um, open architecture um, from a platform standpoint, but I think now it's moving towards banking, not only core data that resides with your uh, data processor, but also merging in your uh, CRM. If you have uh, some type of a RADN type of a solution, bring that in, online banking, all of that. I think that's what really leads to that um, ubiquitous type of an experience that um, will be seamless. Okay, I'm going to bring in Ron into this now. Since you've been quiet on the end over there, we're going to bring you into this. Analytics. It's another area where consumers' expectations are changing. And uh, consumers seem to be more comfortable with the analytics now. I mean, they understand Big Brother is watching, okay? Uh, have they come to expect that, that the kind of knowledge on the part of the merchants and the financial institutions, what we're doing for them, do they kind of understand why or the purpose of us gathering that information? Very, very good question. I think, um, you know, as we have all found out, well, pretty much once you're on the internet, everyone knows what you're doing. From Facebook, uh, I think you mentioned Amazon before, uh, one, one of the, the really curious things are the suggested other items to look at. So I always find that, you know, amazing that you can go in there and buy one item on Amazon and then there's a, a whole list of suggested items. You buy an alligator hat, the next time you go on, they're looking for alligator shoes. <laughs> so that, that baffled me for a little bit. Um, Facebook, yeah, I, and I'm still not sure how the connections work. I'm gonna check with these guys on the left of the table. But one time we went on a vacation, the next time I logged into Facebook, every single ad was about the vacation. So uh, not only do I think that you uh, have to expect it, it's only really going to increase. Um, from the banking aspect, I think people appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned in my conversation before, if you are, you know, listed as a person who just took out a loan, it, it's nice to get a credit card offer. You know, ways to support your life and, you know, they get a, a, a sort of a vibe of where you are today is very helpful. No longer are we just flooded with information. The, the more that we target, the more that we send out to the end user, the end user they really appreciate it. Um, marketing, I mean, for, we've seen it. It's really just helpful. The end users love it. Um, I saw a great story about analytics and um, uh, talks about how sports are using it today, too. So is it going to go away? Absolutely not. Uh, the Houston Rockets picked their whole team using an analytical tool, and they are putting chips in their players' shirts. And they want them to wear it all the time, but obviously there's a union concern. So the more you read these stories, uh, the more that you see it's here to stay, and it's only going to get better. When one quick note, uh, I was reading a research report recently and it's, it's related to using analytics to serve the member, serve the end user. And I mean, I hate all the buzzwords out there, but you know, anticipatory computing. So the example was essentially when you wake up, you may want to check the weather and check your train schedule. So your mobile is automatically going to put those applications front and center. And then during uh, lunch, maybe you want to check your balance and so you, uh, or your savings goal. So that's going to come up automatically. In the evening, you've got you know, ESPN and Facebook. But the main point is, is using the data to really understand how the users are interacting with their devices and then delivering that experience without them even asking. So another uh, related example is um, where the, if this, then that. You know, so if you get, let's say, an alert from your credit union saying your credit card bill is due in five days, have that alert come in and then automatically put you know, three days before the bill is due on your Outlook calendar that, hey, you need to pay your credit card bill. 
So it's basically trying to leverage, again, data and leverage the use of technology to make life easier, more ubiquitous, and more smooth, you know, similar to your presentation earlier, so you don't have to touch all this stuff. And one quick point to that, and I think a lot of that is generational. Uh, I still find that a little bit scary and fun. But when I talk to a 13 and 14 year old, they expect that now. To, to expand on your point, they do not want to talk to anyone. The fact is, if they get a notification that says this is due, I think that's the greatest thing. They'll hit the button. They do not want to call anybody. They just love the fact that they were notified. They pop and they move on. Mm -hmm. My, my uh, analogy before is I've been in a room with about 10 kids and heard not one word. Right. Yeah. But they were talking the whole time. Yeah, on their phone. You know, it's, it's that SMS, it's the text. I think that's really, um, you know, what our younger people are expecting. One of the things that we get sometimes whenever we show our system to people, they'll say, well, do, do users, is that kind of like spooky? Like, you know, they, they, they clicked on this educational article about the three things you need to know before you buy your next car, and then the next thing they know, they're getting an auto loan promo at the top. Like, you know, do they know our track? And I... You know, one of the things, do you all, you ever have tracking cookies? You know what these are, tracking cookies? You ever go to a page and you go somewhere else to watch a YouTube video and there's that ad, right? We're used to that, right? But we like the fact that Pandora uses 400 different things from the music genome to intelligently give us the music that we're going to like. We like the fact that Amazon uses item-to-item -item collaborative filtering to suggest other items with other people that are similar to me bought. So I think that we enjoy the fact that I don't have to search for as many things. I can have things served up to me based upon that. And what I, what I really think is that you're right. I mean, some people do maybe initially feel it spooky, but I think ultimately now it's become expected. So now it's like, if you make me hunt and peck and search, I don't like that. You should just suggest <laughs> things to me based on what I've already done. So I think that's really where we're moving to is tracking that behavior and then just being anticipatory and, and delivering up the, the things that your members want. And, and, and it's, almost, it's, it's almost embarrassing how little information Google has about the user whenever they put in their search criteria and how much you as credit unions have, but how much better they are at targeting than you are. They would kill to have the information that you have. I mean, they would kill. So, yeah, just watch it. They're out there. <laughs> So Ron, um, from a data gathering perspective, we talked a lot about disruptors in the payment space, but do you think that consumers will be disruptors for data and the tides will turn from data brokers to where consumers are now brokering their own information? I think it's acceptance and, and Stephen's point about convenience. If, if it saves them time and effort, I think they are more uh, willing to adapt to it. Uh, the convenience of it all, I, I think obviously, you know, we like to have it quick, as we said, immediate to almost gratification. You hit the button, you know it's being shipped to you. Um, as long as people continue to move, the, the, I'm one of the last 1% that doesn't have a smartphone and I get killed all the time because I had enough Blackberry for a while. But a, as that group moves over to smartphones, uh, my, my mom is 75, she's looking, she just received one. Um, trying to get her to use more than the ATM, there is that expanding market out there. If they find it convenient, I think they will adapt it and they'll contribute. All right, I'm going to ask another question here because this is something that I know comes up a lot and you can all bear with me on this. This is, I hear this from the credit unions. We keep on inventing new products, new apps. They're coming at us faster than we can handle them. At what point in time, because you wear many hats out there. I, I mean, some of these credit unions are CEOs and also janitor. You know, they turn the lights on, they turn the lights off. And um, the question is, as, as technology is coming at us so fast and so furious, at what point in time do we feel that it's dangerous for our credit union to implement all these products and services? Because sometimes we may not understand the implication of <coughs> the product or the service that it has. So, so we have to be careful somewhat. So maybe you can address that a little bit as you've worked with some of these credit unions and some of the experiences that you've seen with the problems, the difficulties that they have. Everybody says, I want to launch this app, but they may not understand exactly what that means or how that relates to them. <laughs> 
Well, we have credit unions that will launch an app, <coughs> and they'll have a phone application, but they also have other applications that kind of compete with that. So they have uh, a mobile app that will take a picture of a check, but they also have another app out there that does the same remote deposit. And their members are logging on to these things, and they're confusing their members now because they may not have understood it fully. From, from my point, I, I don't think, in my point, I don't think there's a danger. I think you can confuse them. It really comes down to what the person likes to utilize. Some people will uh, right away adapt to the, take the picture, send the check in. Some people will still, you know, go to the ATM. That 1% still wants to go in to the actual, you know, physical location. Um, but really, I mean, it goes to, what I'm saying is ease of access, ease of use. And I think that's where you're going to get the greatest adaption. There's the time when we need, obviously, to sunset some of the things that are probably a little bit more frustrating to our end users. Um, but, you know, I think we talked about it before. There's also always a segment out there that just doesn't like to change. So, you know, it may be better, it may be easier, it may be quicker, but it's different than what I had here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the group that you just have to make sure that you're moving them over to the application, using the data wisely, from my aspect, when you're putting something in, and maybe addressing some of the frustrations that they had. So, am I hearing it's more of an education? In, in my opinion, yes, because um, I won't name my credit union, but they made a, tra a change, and it was frustrating for a while. Because I saw certain aspects which I thought, with my knowledge, were a step backwards. Uh, but then once I got used to it and comfortable and moved on, I could see why they could make the change. <coughs> so I don't, I don't think I'm that old and that set in my ways yet, but whenever you make a change, you just need to take your time and make sure that they understand the impacts of the change you're putting in place. Okay. That's a good point. We've got a question yep. over here. Yes, yeah, sir. Does that come back to what you earlier said, Stephen, though, about the unified experience as far as an app goes? That's the one complaint that I hear is that, well, I have to go to this app for that and that app for that. Yeah, I think I know what everyone's referring to now. I wasn't really sure, but yeah, because initially um, RDC uh, is just the latest iteration of a way to get quick to market when you already have a platform that's not extensible and so you don't have a way of really plugging it in integrated, but I got to offer it. Right. And so now I just, it, within this app, it links out to another app that, you know, people have to download to do that function. That's the equivalent of bill pay, right? I, I'll pop up this thing. It's a whole nother vendor. Looks different. I got to learn a new menu system <laughs> and everything, but I got bill pay. PFM, right? Intuit went around years ago with Finance Works and did this. Uh, Money Desktop. There's, there's several of them out there that they're wholly contained PFM systems. And so they're not integrated at all. You click here, it launches this. And that's all it is. It's a time to market. So, you know, to the question of the danger, there's to me, there's only two dangers when it comes to the advancement of the technology that you offer. The first danger is that you don't do anything. That's more dangerous than anything. Uh, being paralyzed by fear and saying, well, I don't want to do it because it's not the perfect thing. You got to at least move. <clears throat> the second danger we, is, is one that we see all the time, and that is what we were just referring to, which is that people make decisions in a bubble. They make a decision, what do I need right now? What's my knee-jerk thing to get the board off my back because I don't have this, and they sell it on a commercial, uh, the credit union down the street. And then what they do is they look up in five years, and they say, I've got this Frankenstein of a system. It's got, i got seven different technology platforms. None of them talk to each other, disjointed. Oh, no, then I throw mobile into the mix. Now I've got another seven user experiences I have to learn if that's all cobbled together the same way my desktop is. So now I'm putting 14 different experiences out there to my members to do these functions. So I think that's the other danger is be careful as you start to invest in the latest and greatest of technology. I mean, I could remember, I was like three or four years ago, everyone talked about PFM, how everyone in the world is going to start budgeting, even though Intuit's been doing it for over a decade, has 1% <laughs> penetration in the market. We thought if we'll just put this online, 50% of our users will start budgeting. It's 2%. So I mean, the point is just, you know, take, take a little bit of time and slow down a little bit and don't get yourself in a mess to where you've signed all these contracts that are not coterminous, and so you're kind of stuck in this like kind of never-ending pattern of, well, my bill pay ends here, and a year later my online banking, and a year later my mobile, and a year later my PFM. I can't ever switch without taking a huge write-off and, and, and terminating these contracts. So be careful, so it doesn't mean immediately respond, but at the same time, don't just get the next thing. If, it, if you're due for a platform refresh, Upgrade your platform first, because if you don't have the right platform, it doesn't really matter how many decisions you make. So, 
And I, I think one other point is um, in the credit union, you have a different executive oversight for different channel strategies. So uh, payments may be sitting in, if it's credit related or on loans, um, you may have a um, call center somewhere there, you got branch operation under there. So what happens is the, the who's really making sure um, I think someone mentioned here unified c commerce or that ubiquitous experience. Uh, who's really looking at that mem customer, the member journey map through all channels? And I think um, Amazon CEO, when he launched the, the whole drone thing that's going to pop up in your balcony and drop <laughs> the package, uh, uh, watch about disruption. That's going to disrupt FedEx for most likely. Um, but I think he made a comment that um, uh, complaining is not a strategy. So technology is coming, it's real. Um, and to your point, I do agree that um, the risk is a lot higher not uh, not doing something. Make incremental changes, but I think uh, structurally, realistically, whether you're a small shop or a large shop, um, some one person, probably one point guard, has to really own um, that whole experience from all channel. And I think that's something probably just to step back and look at it, how it's being done today and how it could be done um, to really ensure um, that I ubiquitous type of experience that we are all talking about. Yeah, one point I'd make is, you know, everyone talks about mobile first, mobile first. I would and I emphasize, and I think what both of you are saying is strategy first. Mm -hmm. Figure out what you're trying to do, how you're trying to serve it, and then, you know, before you dive into all these contracts, really think about it across the credit union. Don't just jump in. That's point one. Point two is really you know, work with key partners. I mean, you look, co op's a, a real leader in the, in the industry. They have a lot of research, a lot of people. So, if I were a small credit union that's getting confused by all of this because I just don't have time to keep up with all these things, I would work on my internal strategy and I'd work with partners like co op to, you know, help me figure this out and help deliver the platform, look at these unified platforms like, uh, like Alchemy that, you know, don't make everything disjointed for the member. Chris, just from the rewards program perspective, um, we see it from, a, from our product, it's more of a convenience for the member. So a lot of our clients will talk about single sign-on and having that rewards link um, from their online banking, which makes sense. But also think of it from the member's perspective. If they have to log in and they have to go through a few different steps to get there, maybe giving them a direct website or a direct mobile app for just that pur purpose makes sense because now they can come in, they can see their points, they can go and look at what merchants are in the program, where can I go for pizza tonight. So it's a matter of convenience. Um, so the rewards is maybe a little bit different, but it does We're make sense. We're going to integrate to your system, Heidi. Right? I, no. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no, no, actually, no, to, to her point, it, it's, it's a good point there because you don't, you don't have to boil the ocean with this whole thing, right? You don't have right. to go in and say everything has to be 100% integrated day one. Like one of the things we've talked about with rewards now is saying, well, <coughs> what if we could at least get a point feed? Mm -hmm. So just tell us the current points, how many got added last month or whatever, and I can at least put that in the dashboard when yeah. people log in. Now, if they want to go and plan a trip with those points, doing the integration work to go into a travel, the, like they have a whole travel system. You go in and book a trip to Cabo or something, right, and pick your airfare and all this. Well, that's a lot of work to try to integrate that all into the same experience. But we can at least probably get you know, points and like what you can do to increase your points and all that fed through an API, so at least it's integrated there, and then to do a more kind of really deep dive into the whole system, you don't want to reinvent what they've already invented, right? right? So, that, so it doesn't have to be every single thing, but you ought to look for really smart points of integration that allow for a, more, a better user experience. If you're not going to ask questions, I am. So um, <laughs> how do you differentiate yourself as a credit union? We're fighting the banks. We're fighting the credit unions. We're fighting each other. I see it in different communities. And we all have products and services. How are we differentiating ourselves from, say, the banks? What would you recommend to the credit unions that are sitting here today? How would you differentiate? What are some of the things that you would do? So I'll go first. <laughs> um, I think one of the element is, um, um, I think research shows that um, consumers across um, globally really fed up of hearing from companies first class service and so on and so forth. Everybody says they give first class service. But what they're really looking for, that recognition, honesty, trust, and respect, um, that's really falling short. Um, and I think that's where credit union has an uh, inherent sort of a value prop because uh, really do well by doing good by others. You have a community uh, altruistic um, 
uh, element to it, as well as you uh, don't impose uh, deceptive type of fees or practices, you're really responsible. So how do we um, highlight and articulate those things um, to really uh, create that value prop or to uh, make uh, consumers listen and take notice? The other pieces I talk about, there's four E's um, to this whole experience. There's a great book called Experience Economy, which studies all dif dif different industries. It's mind-boggling, so I won't recommend anybody reading, but if you get a short <laughs> synopsis, read it. But what they talk about it is just um, education, escapist, entertainment, and aesthetics. Uh, so look at your business strategy and see education, how you are really educating your members about the product, services, how it works, you know, all of that element through all channels, just not only physical. Entertainment doesn't necessarily mean you have to have clowns running around in your branch, but really have engaging type of staff who are interested naturally, creating those conversation, asking those consultative type of a lead, and then escapist. I think that's a great part. Who wants to um, do the work? I really don't. I mean, we talked about it. We want right now convenience. So when you come in, don't give me all the laundry list of things that I have to do. Just take away, you know, send me to a beach or somewhere. So take that whole escapist element of the system and process. Um, you have the flexibility because credit unions are smaller. Uh, decisions are not made uh, bureaucratically like in a larger chase or city. You can really be nimble and flexible around there. And last but not least is really that aesthetics, that how you are, um, your branches, your website, how uh, user friendly that is, how polished it is. And I think those are the elements if you really look at your strategy holistically, you really can, um, I truly believe that um, your fundamentals are very strong. You can build on it. I think we've come, oh, please, uh, Brian. Just to say one other note, and it's not related to competing with uh, banks or other credit unions, but everyone's, you know, talking about digital wallets and everyone's talking about, you know, competing on the payment side with the PayPal's, the Google's, Facebook's, Amazon's, et cetera. And all the statistics have shown is the way financial institutions, especially credit unions, compete is purely based on the trust that your, the members have in you. The, so the consumers are indicating in survey after survey that they trust their financial institution to provide these mobile wallets, to provide these mobile payment solutions over the non-financial institutions. But the scary part is, and this goes back to what Stephen was saying, is that's starting to drop. That delta is starting to drop between the financial institution and these non-financial institution um, uh, companies. So the main point is, is we have to get off our ass. We need to start, pra you know, moving forward with the right strategy, and then start testing on some of these things, so we can use that that experience, use that trust to uh, to compete uh, beyond the banks and the credit unions, but others that are trying to eat our lunch. And and kudos to Brian because he mentioned <coughs> some of the smaller credit unions. You do have to rely on your partners, such as co-op. You have, we have strategic people that can help you bring in the experts, we're bringing in the panel here that can help you work through some of these hurdles that you have to overcome. Panelists, anything else that you'd like to add before we end today? Well, we thank you for your time. Please remember. Bill Thunder. Bill, <laughs> <laughs> Please remember, hashtag, uh, pound sign co-op think. And also, there is an evaluation sheet. Would you please take just a few minutes to fill that out? And uh, we do appreciate your time. Thank you very much, panelists. Thank you for your time here. Thank you, Thank you very much.